Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. How is everybody doing? Hey, Angela, good to see you. Welcome, Lawanda. I see we still have people coming in. Come on in, come on in. So today, um, first things first, did anybody do anything that we can celebrate? What have you done to move your business forward? Anybody want to share? I'll talk I'll while there. I can. This is Jean. Good morning, hey, all. Good afternoon. I have assigned uh, two new business partners because I'm learning and growing. And um, yeah, hey, still where's got. Where's my fan at? Y'all know Miss. G- yes, Miss <laughs> Jean, with your two oh. business partners. Congratulations! Thank you. Thank you. So, so tell us how did how did you meet these people? Because we got a lot of new people, um, virtual coffee break in the business. So tell us how you how you met these people and took them through the process to get them to the okay. Stage. Okay, so I'm double dipping. I'm all over the place right now. But how I met them? Actually, they were relatives, and they were in my warm market. So I've been you know working with them, but they I got a couple more been booking at me. So. I'm trying to uh, work with them, drip on them, and and bring them on over. It wasn't so hard because they see me. Right. So, um, yeah. So you attracted you attracted your family members to you. They see yes, you ma'am. Going on social media, so you're being active on your social media, and that made them curious. Oh well, not as much as I need to I, that's the area i need to work in that, that social media so uh-huh. um yeah but i'm doing what i can and I it's working it. well congratulations to you super super thank proud you. of you dick of valencia thank hey girl <laughs> who else wants to share what have you done that we could celebrate to move your business forward welcome cecilia well I'll, I'll, I'll go real quick because um i'm driving but Okay. Um, I was I was going for ten no's yesterday. I got five, but only because I had a, I had like four people to say yes. Woo! <laughs> so I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And it was actually one of the ones, um, Tanisha. Uh, if you remember a three way car where, um, uh, I had a fire engine red online. She was just talking, talking. And- um, I actually called her yesterday. She gave me a not right now, but she was like, I'm watching you. I see you. And she was like, thanks for, you know, keeping me in a loop. And she's like, you never know, you know, just keep calling me. You might call me one time. And I say, you know what? This is the right time I'm ready. So I was excited about that because I was ready for her this time. I'm like, okay, let's go red. Okay. So <laughs> I'm excited about that. I love it. That's good. And Denise said, I have been passing out flyers at Dunkin' Donuts and Tim Hortons and the auto shop. When I went to get an oil change, when I printed the flyer out at Walmart, I gave them to the cashier and inspector. So Denise, what's on your flyer? Just curious. Is it, is is it about your travel agency services or what? Lou said, I'm giving out two business cards per day, sharing my business more. Good job. Good job. Erica got her first payment today. We love that belief chat. Cha-ching. Congratulations, Erica. Felicia sent out 15 videos. It's not her weekly goal, but she's moving. That's awesome, Felicia. Keep striving to hit that weekly goal, but that's fantastic. That's 15 people you expose to the business. Imagine doing that every day consistently, right? That is fantastic. Shamika's doing two business cards a day, keeps the attrition away. Yeah, I love that. I love it, I love it, I love it. And Denise said both, they're separate. So she does a travel flyer and then something to pique their interest. Okay, that's good, that's good. And for those of you that are using the peak interest cards, find places where you can leave your business card. There are people who look at those boards, those bulletin boards. You know, I know at you know my old um, where I used to go to my hair supply, they had a ton of little business card things, and you see all types of business cards there. Those are great places um, to leave your peak interest business cards um, for people to see what you got going on. Rochelle said, "I have follow up." 
on a potential sign up and been inviting prospecting daily to a zoom that's awesome 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 erica says she's running out of business cards that's a good problem to have erica we like that <laughs> running out of business cards that's what i'm talking can i say about. something absolutely over the weekend i gave out i think almost like 16 black cards nice um, i was at the grocery store I like the attitude of the guy that was making a sandwich. I was like, I like that attitude to be on my team. Mm -hmm. Are you open enough to hear about how you make an extra income on a part-time But He was like, who won't be? Right. So I gave him three. He said, I got someone for the second one. And then somebody from the shop shop was like, looking, looking, looking. So I'm walking. I look back. They talking. I was like, yes. Then I went to my bank and I'm like, I know we ain't supposed to be talking like this, but <laughs> are you open up? She was like, girl, yeah. I think I gave her two. And then I was, I forgot where I was at, somewhere. And then in my church that Saturday, we had a um, community affair and I gave out some. And I, I, what it was, my son said too, I'm thinking too hard. It was so easy, but I was so high from the convention. Mm -hmm. That's so easy. So somebody was like, next time, try to get some numbers on that. I was just about that to you... say, that's the only part you're missing, <laughs> I... giving it out, but you're not getting anything yeah right so that's, the, no. that's, that's the only mistake i did but video wise the ones that peep interest to um i did also like over 10 videos that i gave them just to refresh them because a lot of them is having hard time the time wise of the opportunities but what some already to, said, to get like, them on the webinar yeah to get them on the webinar okay so, yeah. okay, so freeze for a second okay here's the tweak i want you to make Instead of giving out the physical black card, what you want to do is say to them, let me text you my electronic business card. Okay. This way they have to give you their name and their and your phone number and their phone number. And then you use the Planet Black card, the electronic card that's in your mobile app. So okay. now you've captured their information. Okay. Right? Number mm -hmm. two. Stop inviting to the Zooms without sending them the video. Okay. Because let me ask you this question, Benita. If you're busy, would you prefer a 10 minute video that you can watch when it's convenient for you or a webinar that happens at a certain day at a certain time? Which one's gonna be better for you? The video. So why do you keep inviting to the webinar without sending the video? No, that's what I was saying that that's what I started doing was to send them the video because they was having a hard time. Yeah, um, that's of what weeks you should ago. always lead with. You should always okay. lead with the video. Okay. Listen, y'all, how many people do you know that are not busy? Everybody. Everybody's <laughs> busy. So why do we keep only, I'm not, let me be clear. I'm not saying do not invite to the Zoom webinars. I am not saying that. I'm saying, if you invite somebody to a Zoom webinar, go ahead and also send them the 10 minute video so that just in case, which the chances are high, that they don't make it on the Zoom because life happens right at that time for whatever reason, you still expose them. I started sending out videos because of what you said a couple weeks ago. <laughs> right, <why>. remember there's <laughs> levels of exposure, right? Yes. I, I, I personally close 99.9% .9 of my people with the video. But if for some reason I don't close them, they, they watched the video, got them on a three-way call, I still didn't close them. Now I'm going to expose them to a 30-minute webinar, right? If, if the 30-minute webinar didn't close them, now the next level, I'm going to invite them to a 60-minute hotel meeting. Y'all see the levels? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Each exposure is more time, more information that they're going to get. And it's like too many of y'all are skipping the video and going straight to the webinar, but it's not a convenient time for these people to get on the webinar. So you just hoping and praying they get on and then they don't get on or you're not sure if they got on. But if you had sent them the video, they got exposed. Mm -hmm. Right. So what you do is when you're inviting them to the video to the webinar, just say, listen, I'm going to text you a quick 10 minute video 
It's just going to give you a, a, a overview of what you're going to see tonight. But tonight you'll get more information and you'll hear from our top leaders. And okay, please stop inviting to webinars without sending the video because you're missing out. Because how many of you would would agree that the you have more people who don't show up to the Zoom than do show up to the Zoom? That's true. So true. Right? It, it's it's just it is what it is but if you send them the video guess what when they get up in the morning and grab their phone to go to the bathroom they can watch it then mm -hmm. or maybe they have a commute to work or whatever they can watch it then or on their lunch break they can watch let them watch it when it's convenient for them stop trying to get people to adhere to your schedule right and the other thing is i highly recommend you leverage the planet marketing facebook page because monday tuesday and thursday we do 30 minute webinar presentations there and guess what you can just tag your prospect in that and they can watch it whenever they want right today is thursday they're doing one tonight but guess what if you go to the planet marketing facebook page right now you could tag someone on the tuesday webinar that was done and guess what? They get to watch it when it's convenient for them, not at a certain day and at a certain time. Let's make it easy to expose people to our opportunity. That's why we have five different exposures. We got videos, we got webinars, we got the on-demand call, right? We got PBRs and we got a, a 24 hour, um, I'm sorry, and we got the hotel meetings, the weekly meetings. So you got five different ways to expose people to the business, but the quickest and easy and most convenient way is the videos. Let people watch it when it's convenient for them. Try, stop trying to narrow them down to a certain day and a certain time and have your fingers and toes crossed that they actually make it on. And usually it's not that they don't wanna get on, they do wanna get on, they had every intention of getting on, but stuff happens, life is lifing for people, right? So I want y'all to win, get these people exposed, all right? And make sure you bam faming them. Who knows what bam fam is? Book a meeting from a meeting. Exactly, when you invite them to these webinars, say I, I wanna be able to follow up with you and, and get any questions you have um, answered, you know, so when are you available for a call either right after the webinar or tomorrow? Schedule it. That's the three way call. And now you're not chasing people down trying to say, I don't know if they got on. There was like, you know, 200 people on that webinar. So I don't know if my person made it on or not because it ain't going to show their name. Sometimes it just shows a phone number or Samsung something. And you're like, I don't know if my person's on or not. Right, but if you had an if you've scheduled an appointment to follow up with them, it don't matter because whether they got on the webinar or not, because you got the three way call scheduled and you sent them the video. So even if they didn't make it onto the webinar, they could watch the ten minute video before the call. Lorna said, "What if it's after a week? Well, did you schedule?" Lorna, come off of mute. Because if you've scheduled the three way call, it should be within 24 hours, you should be following up. So give me give me the scenario when you say what if it's after a week and they still haven't watched it. Are you saying when you got them on a three way call, they said they haven't watched it. Lorna. Are you looking? For, I just asked to unmute you. You can't get okay. Then give me some more detail because I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. What if 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 after a week they still haven't watched it? You should be having a scheduled time to follow up with them. They're giving you a date and time, and that's the three way call. Bam fam is book a meeting from a meeting, Lawanda. 
So just like when you go to your doctor's office, right? And you have an exam, what does the doctor make you do after the doctor leaves the room? Where do they tell you to go? They make you do a follow-up. Right, they make you go to the front desk, right? And what do the people at the front desk do? Schedule your next meeting. Why? Because they don't. They they ain't got time to be chasing you down. You know, six weeks from now to say, "Hey, Luanda, we need you to come in for a follow up." No, before you leave that meeting, they gonna schedule the next meeting. So anytime you're on the phone with someone, um, um, you know, you're discussing the business before you end that communication, you're gonna schedule the next follow up. You're gonna schedule the next appointment. This way, you're never having to chase people down. Book a meeting, okay. call a meeting, and you keep doing that until they sign up. If they say okay. they're not a bit, you know, they're not ready right now. Now's not a good time. Then you say, "Is it okay if I follow up with you next month to see, you know, if if that's a better time for you?" And you schedule it, and you just keep moving that appointment until they sign up. This way, nobody falls um, in the cracks. Book a meeting from a meeting. All right, Lorna said, no, I had someone tell me he isn't available yet for the callback because he hasn't had a chance to watch the video. So then you just ask him, when when, when are you, when can you watch the video? That's all. Don't overthink it, Lorna. <laughs> it's, it's just common sense. Oh, okay, you haven't had a chance. Okay, when can you watch it? And then you schedule it based on that. I mean, it's simple. Y'all, please don't overthink this. I think that's probably the, the biggest issue that many of you may have is you just overthink it. <laughs> if he says he hasn't watched it, okay, when can you watch it? <laughs> right? It's just a simple, <laughs> and then based on when he tells you he can watch it, then you schedule the, the call. That's all. Uh, Rochelle said, what do we send someone who's done a three-way? I sent... I sent them on Tuesday, on the Tuesday Zoom, and they can only see some of it due to time. Same thing I just shared with Lorna. When can you watch it and or send them the video, the 10 minute video? Again, people are busy. They're telling you, I don't have a lot of time. I can't get on this. So just send the video. Yep, Valencia, we got to get out of our own way. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Any any questions? What 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 obstacles, challenges um are you facing with your business that I can help you with? Um okay, Denise said, "Can you reiterate the Facebook groups for posting? IE Planet cannot be in our travel group, but on the business page via Facebook." Does that count? Online. Okay, so let's specifically talk about Facebook, right? You have your personal page, right? But then you should have a travel group that you create to market your IntelliTravel business. And you can only market your IntelliTravel business in your travel group, meaning you could only post about promotions, deals, specials, anything related to selling your travel agency services in your travel group. You cannot recruit in that group. You can't talk about contact me if you want to become a travel agent. Nope, can't do that. Can't post anything about planet marketing or the flyers or you can't do any of that in your travel group. All you can do when you are operating in your travel group, you are wearing your IntelliTravel hat and that is the only hat due to compliance that you can wear when you're operating in your travel group, okay? Now, if you have someone that's constantly, you know, liking your stuff or whatever and you private message them, you know, say, hey, I see you like my posts. Have you ever considered because that's different. Because that's behind the scenes. There's no compliance issue there. That's different. But I'm talking about posting in your travel group, right? The name of your travel agency. You can only operate as an IntelliTravel travel advisor in that group. Now, on your now on your personal page, operate that as your planet marketing page where you're attracting people 
who are looking for time freedom, personal freedom, financial freedom. Let your personal page be your reality show. Show people what it's like to be an entrepreneur on the money making side of the travel industry and how you're using um, you know, this business opportunity with Planet Marketing to achieve your goals in life and let people know that you're looking for other people who wanna go after those freedoms or who wanna create residual income, people who wanna elevate their lifestyle. Now, from time to time, you may have a, a, a post from your travel group from once in a while, share it to your personal page so that more people will join your travel group, right? They may not know it exists. Hopefully it's public, right? But every now and then, not all the time because you don't want people in the public thinking that all you do is book travel. Not if you're trying to secure the legacy and hit directorship, right? And as far as having a business page on Facebook, that is only beneficial if you are going to pay to run ads. Paid advertising on Facebook, you must have a business page in order to do that. All right. What questions do you have? I just saw, saw somebody's hand up. That was me, Director Burke. I, but you kind of answered the question I had. I spoke to someone last night that um, I highly admire, but she was telling me that I needed to move my um, business off of my personal page and get my own business page. And I remember you saying uh, earlier this week that we are the CEO of our business. And so I'm taking into consideration what she's saying, but I'm also feeling like, like you were just saying, that's why I put my hand down. That was confirmation for me. Like be, letting people see my life and the life that I live. Exactly. Would be, yeah. Because exactly. she's like booked me to do, to do, I, I'm doing travel too, but she booked me to do a trip. But if she didn't see me throughout all these years through my life, she wouldn't trust me to do this trip. I would have just been the little girl that she knew when I, in, when I was 22. So that's my point. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, Erica. That is my point. Your personal page is your reality show. These are the people you went to school with, right? Your family members, your cousins, ex coworkers. They're seeing you through your personal page, not no business page. On your business page, the only thing you would ever post is business. It's just a app, it's just a billboard. But if we're saying this is a relationship building business, how do you build a relationship through a business page that all you share is business? So thank you, thank you so much, Erica. You just proved my point. And thank you for being the CEO of your business. There's gonna be a lot of people who suggest stuff out, right? Suggest different things. Oh, you should do this, you should do that. Listen, right? Cause you may learn something new, but at the end of the day, you are the CEO of your business. And so you make you get to make the final decision. This is not an employee employer um, you know, environment where you have to do what somebody tells you to do. If you got a great coach, follow your coach. Do what your coach is saying, right? Director D Jody Wynn really went in and talked about this yesterday. But don't have so many people in your ear that now you're confused because you're getting contradictory information. Not that one information is wrong. And I want to be clear. I'm not saying that anything anybody else tells you is wrong. No, we all have different leadership styles, different coaches style. We all want you to make money, right? But all I'm saying is so if something isn't working, try something else to have better outcomes. Yes? Does that make sense? What's going to give you the best outcome? And then that's what you go with. Sandra and then Lawanda. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, coach. Good afternoon. <laughs> so I had, I had a moment yesterday and you were totally in my head. And I just want to share it with everybody about following your coach's advice, because yesterday in my building, I'm still working. I'm in corporate America and downstairs in the lobby, there's the 
the North Fulton. Go ahead, go ahead. There's the North Fulton Chambers of Commerce, and they always have these events. And so yesterday they had a young leadership event. Perfect opportunity. There were people in the lobby. But guess what? I didn't show up to that event. I was coming downstairs, but my posture wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I wasn't dressed like a businesswoman. I wasn't dressed like a business owner because I work in an office that's closed all day long. So I'm like, oh, I don't need to dress, you know, corporate wise. But had I shown my posture yesterday, I could have stepped up to at least five or six of those young ladies who were there for that meeting. They were in the lobby just hanging out. Mm. But because I didn't show up as a business owner, how could I step up to someone who was dressed corporate, hair nice, makeup nice? So I will never be caught like that again. That Never. I will always lesson show learned. up. Good lesson learned. Thank you I for was sharing. so pissed at myself for not following the advice of your coach. Show your posture. Always show up as a business owner. That and I didn't. Awesome. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Sandra, for, for sharing that. <laughs> and, you know, for those of you who this may be your first time, um, on virtual coffee break, but well, it was probably what several several weeks ago. Um, we talked about dressing for success to attract the professional people that you're looking for, and so we were discussing how even if you're going to you know the grocery store, you're running to you know Target or Walmart or whatever, you you think you're just gonna run out and you don't want to go out in your uh you know your fuzzy slippers and you know your night clothes <laughs> like some people do you know you got your satin bonnet on you're like oh i'm just gonna run in here and grab some milk and run out no because you never know who you are going to run into that you are going to want to prospect for this business and if you look a hot mess please do not go up to anybody talking about you a planet marketing rep making the rest making the company look bad and I shared a story how uh, a story that Mr. Bradley shared with us that uh, one day he was taking a flight and he had just like a jogging suit on, you know, when you're flying, you kind of want to be comfortable or whatever. But the person who sat next to him on that flight was suited up and they were just having a, you know, a conversation and Mr. Bradley wanted to prospect them, but he was like, I wasn't looking the part, so I wasn't even going to embarrass myself. And so he said, never again will I take a flight where I don't look like I'm an entrepreneur ready to do business. He said, never again, because it was a missed opportunity. And so, you know, I want you all to always be ready. Always be ready. Do not leave your home. I don't care if you go into the mailbox. You never know who you're going to meet. You're going to meet your neighbor at the mailbox. Right, and, and y'all could be talking about something. Your neighbor might say, oh, you know, yeah, getting the mail, getting, you know, we just got back from a vacation. So, you know, I'm checking the mail. I mean, anything can happen. You gotta, I'm so used, used to now always being dressed. Brows penciled in, lipstick on, earrings, always, always. And I'm just sitting in my house with no plans to leave the house. But because I do this Zoom and stuff like that, and I got people coming and going, I'm always ready to do business. Even when I'm casual, it's a dress up casual. How many of y'all know there's a dress up casual and a dress down casual, right? So always be in your dressed up casual so that you're ready to do business no matter what. I want you to always be ready, right? We talked about hairstyles. I know you love your hair, but you should have a professional hairstyle. Your hair shouldn't be all rainbow colors or whatever. I know you like pink, but you shouldn't have fuchsia in your hair when you 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 trying to run a a, a million dollar corporation. Yeah, I mean, no nobody takes you serious. And then you're wondering why your business isn't growing cuz people don't see you as a professional cuz you're not putting your professional look in front of you. 
right? So you want to dress the way you want to be addressed. Get your hair done. If you've been wearing the same style for 20 years, step it up. Go to invest in yourself. Go to the salon, right? And, and get a new look. If you want people to look at you different because now you're an entrepreneur, then show them something different. Make them want to say, oh, wow, that looks so nice on you. You know, make them want to have a conversation with you. But if you still write this down, if y'all taking notes, you cannot attract new money with an old mindset. Step up your look. I get it, you always, you like wearing your ponytail, 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 but that ain't always the best professional look. Switch it up. Have a professional give you a professional look. Erica said, I gotta get out of these gym clothes. Yes, ma'am, yes you do. I had to as well. Had, had, had to ditch the yoga pants and the t-shirt as comfortable as they were. Like we say, look like you have access to money. I don't care if you haven't made a dollar in this business yet. Can you please dress like you have access to money? So when you talk about the, the business, you're believable, right? Karen? I, I just wanted to piggyback on what um, you were saying. Uh, I Like the sister earlier said, you were in my head. You, you were in my head uh -oh. uh, and I was leaving uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, coming home and it was an early morning flight and I was just going to get comfortable and I was planning on sleeping on a plane. I'm like, what was it? The director, Tanisha Burke, say. So I got, I unpacked my suitcase and got a, a nice uh, jumpsuit that I had never worn before. I had brought, because I left convention and went to Charlotte and had to stay there for a week. And um, I, I had some, I brought it for convention, but I didn't get a chance to wear it. And it was brand new. I said, well, I'm going to put on my brand new outfit and go to the airport. And Lord knows, do you know? I'm glad I did because I didn't know that my plane was going to be delayed five times. I spent all day in the airport in Charlotte and I was dressed and impressed. So when people talked to me and I even did a live, I was, you know, doing a podcast for, for, for my show and they were asking me about it. I felt good about talking to them about it. I felt, you're right. When you're dressed up, you feel postured up. And I would say, yes, you know, um, and, you know, do you keep your income options open? And, you know, we were, I was establishing rapport, but yeah. I think it was because I had on that brand new outfit. <laughs> and I'm glad you right. know, because I was, I was, I'm telling you, I was going to wear something very comfortable because I'm like, oh, I'm just going to fly in and fly and I'll be home. And I was at the airport practically all day. I didn't get home until 10 o'clock that wow. evening, but I was dressed for the part. Thanks. I love it. Like the bird, <laughs> you I were, love it. And ladies, invest in one wig. Just one wig. Because that's what I did in the beginning. I, I, I didn't know anything about doing my hair because I was, like I was just explaining, I'm the ponytail girl, right? So I didn't know how to style my hair or anything like that. But what I did in the beginning when I started the business, I invested in a wig so that if I needed to run out and I needed to have a professional look, right? I ain't got time because doing hair takes a lot of time, right? It. This is why I love my locks. Lanice, I love my locks because I'm always ready. If it's a last minute, hey, you want to meet for lunch? I ain't got to do my hair, right, Lanice? We just, hair is already done when you got locks. But when you loose natural or you got a, a relax, you know, relaxed hair, whatever, you got to take time to style that stuff. It requires a lot of time. And so in the beginning, I just invested in a wig. It started off with one wig, one good professional, you know, that I could just put it on, shake and go. Right. And then I started having different styles and different, you know, highlights and stuff, you know, but something that no matter what, at least my hair is going to be done. <laughs> right. My hair is going to be done. I could throw on some lipstick, some earrings and go. Right. So do what's going to work for you 
where, meet yourself where you're at. I'm not saying go out and spend a lot of money and invest in all of this immediately, but start somewhere, invest in your look, get your nails done, right? Or learn how to do them yourself. But you can't be going out with chip nails and you know, you're going too long for a fill and it's obvious that you two months overdue for a fill. It's like, it's not cute because you're not looking like you have access to money. So who's going to take you serious when you talk about you have a business opportunity that can change their life? Nobody. Right? Dress the way you want to be addressed. Right? And be the person you want to attract. You want to attract sharp, ambitious, driven professionals? Guess what? Guess who you have to be? Sharp, ambitious, driven, and professional. That includes your conversation. I had to learn how to not say certain words. I had to, y'all know how we got to switch up. <laughs> y'all don't know about the switch up. Some of y'all know about the switch up. You you got you got that that conversation you have when you with your family. But do you use that same type of communication when you're at work in corporate America? No, you got to switch it up. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Right? And you got to you got to be willing to change who you are so that you can become the person that you are designed to be. You can't stay the same. Can't stay the same. Questions, what other questions? This is good. I, I like these random conversations today. I mean, I like when we have topics and stuff, but when it's random like this, I love it. Kim, I know you got a question. <laughs> you had a look on your face like you had a question. No question? Just more of a story, honestly. Okay, go ahead, share. Um, go along with what we're all talking about. When my husband and I went to Stone Mountain Monday, just walked around, and uh, there was a, a group there that you could spin the wheel and win something. And of course, it was, oh, we got Miami Beach. And so she was like, oh, you got Miami Beach. Come on over here. Let me talk to you about it. And I said, well, wait a minute. If it's about vacation, we're business owners. We own our own uh, travel agency business. And she said, really and I said yeah she was like let me have a card so always have cards with you ladies because I whipped a card out and handed it a planet marketing card to her and I said here you go uh we own global paradise travel um and she was like oh wow okay well I guess I just hit the CEO and the CFO then you sure did and she was like okay well all right well thanks thanks for spinning the wheel and I said no worries we walked off walked back and she stopped us she was a little farther up and she stopped and she said okay so I really got to talk to y'all I want to know more. How can I, how can I do that? So I get, I sent her the videos and I'm trying to get her to the Tuesday meeting. So always keep those cards with you. Love that story. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I love that you had posture. I love that you were prepared with your cards. Excellent. 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 Got her the videos, got her contact information, right? Because how else would she send her the videos if she didn't get her information? That's that's all you got to do. There's so many people that are looking for us. And all you got to do is just open your mouth. You'd be so surprised. Shamika? Um, I just wanted to say because um, I was having a conversation with my team. And um, a lot of people didn't know that they can invite their prospects to the Tuesday meeting and um, and or the IMV as a second exposure. So to, um, I kind of got a little story too, to the people that's more seasoned and smiling and dialing. So I actually called someone yesterday who was supposed to sign up a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, I never heard from her and I didn't know. So I just was checking up on her. And she was like, I'm glad you checked up on me. Come to find out she was in a car accident. Um, her birthday had just passed. And so she was just going through a lot of um, things. And so I was able to just tell her, you know, um, you know, of course, sympathize with her idea. You feel felt found because I was telling her, she was like, I don't have the investment right now. I'm paying for, um, I think, hospital bills or something. She was saying, and then, you know, the light bulb went off. <laughs> so I was like, I totally understand, you know, where you're coming from. 
Um, listen, when I first started the business, I did not have the initial investment. Um, I actually had to wait until I got my taxes. And then I was like, you know, something clicked in my head when I was like, okay, I'm over the age of 30 and I'm having a $200 problem. I need to change that. And so I actually invited her to the IMV. I was like, listen, I know, you know, we do talk about business. We make money together, but we also build relationships. This is an amazing culture. We inspire each other. We pray with each other. I was like, listen, we can Monday through Friday. We got the inspirational morning by the 7 a.m. Central. I would love for you to hop on and just get inspired, get motivated, um, and just kind of see the culture of it. And she got on and she th- she sent me a text immediately this morning. was like, oh, my God, thank you so much. For, for getting me on there. I really needed to hear those things. So y'all can invite your prospects on to the Inspiration Morning Vitamin and the Tuesday Zoom. I love getting them on there. So, and also using, um, I sent out the Father's Day. Um, was it a Father's Day? Like they were kind of having like a back and forth with Director Scott and Jay Stewart. Um, I actually sent that to my dad um, because he missed it when he was live and you know, he needed that encouragement too. So don't be scared to send those um, other exposures that are showing the culture of the business because it that could close out people on its own as well. Absolutely. And I'm glad you shared that. If you notice in your mobile app, there's a lot of videos. So yes, we, we focus on preview ITA, preview rep, you know, the big picture video, but all the other videos are to show the culture. And so, you know, for example, just they, they created a video based off of the convention that just passed, right? So how inspiring would it be as this is after they've been exposed to the business, right? They've been exposed, they've seen the big picture, they had a three-way call, but they just haven't quite signed up yet. Maybe you say, hey, just wanted to you know follow up with you. We just had our convention and I just wanted to share, um, you know, uh, just shared, you know, a quick video about the convention we just had. I'm looking forward for you coming up, coming aboard, you know, when you're ready. We already have convention 2024. So, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, you get started and we can, you know, be at 2024 convention together because it's already there. It's already out there for people to register for. But yes, look at some of those other videos. Know those videos that are in the mobile app so that you can send what's relatable to your prospect. I wanna go to Cecilia's question. She said, how do I get people to get inspired to travel that has never traveled? They talk about traveling and taking trips, but never do. Great question, Cecilia. There are two reasons why people who say they wanna travel don't travel. Anybody want to share what the two reasons? If you've been on coffee break, you already know what the answer is. Type it in the chat. What are the two reasons that people don't travel who claim that, there you go. You see that, Cecilia? Time and money. Time and money. And what's the solution to time and money? Put that in the chat. What is the solution to time and money, to get in more time and more money. Thank you, Kim. Plan that marketing. Hello. (laughs) That is what we do is plan and marketing rep. Go back to to the presentation. Time freedom, personal freedom, financial freedom. Design your ideal life. So Cecilia, what you wanna do is invite those people who want to travel more to take a look at the planet marketing business opportunity that can help them gain more income and more time so that they can travel. But at the end of the day, Cecilia, if you're trying to only talk to people about booking travel or taking a trip when the priority on their list is being able to pay their electric bill in full and not just put something on it (laughs) or being able to buy groceries or being able to afford dance lessons and football fees. You can't talk to those people who are struggling right now to pay their bills about taking a darn trip. That's, That's low on their list. Now, 
Is there a group of people in society that are financially stable and can book trips? Yes. Yep. But which group is bigger? You think the people that can afford the trips or the people who can't take the trips? Which one you think you're going to come in contact with the most? Right? The people who can't take the trips. So Cecilia, what you want to do is you want to offer them the opportunity to earn some extra income so that they can travel more and do the things that they need to do. But the priority for most people right now who are struggling, I promise you the priority is not taking a cruise or a trip to Jamaica. The priority is being able to afford to fill up their gas tank, to buy groceries, to buy their prescription drugs, to make sure these kids have what they need for school. That's the priority. So that's where the planet marketing side of the business comes in. Okay, does that make sense, Cecilia? Good, good. The other thing is, Cecilia, have you created a travel group on Facebook with the name of your travel agency? So that you could put people in that group who enjoy travel and love all those all things travel. You want to have that travel group. And then the other thing I would suggest. Okay, you're doing that today. Okay, good. The other thing I would suggest Cecilia is to get certified and do the training with um, for uplift. Right uplift is a service that allows people to take the trip ahead of time, but if they qualify, they can pay for the trip over time. Right, so they may want to take a $5,000 trip to Jamaica. Uh, or Turks and Caicos, but they, they don't have the full 5000 right now. Well, if they get approved through Uplift, they can, you know, pay over time, right? But they got they got to be able to pass that credit thing to get approved for that, all right? So that that's another way that you can help people who want to take trips or whatever, but the best way that's going to help you and help them long term, right? Because Uplift is only going to help them this one time, right? On one trip. But if we can introduce them to Planet Marketing, now they can set themselves up for a lifetime. Lawanda? Sorry, I had it on speaker. I mean, not speaker on. Okay, so I wanted to say um, when you're out and about and it's time for your Zooms and stuff, get on the Zooms because that's how I got my business partner. Um, I was in the uh, hospital sick and my nurse was like, what are you what are you listening to? I said, well, I own my own um, travel business. Um, and she said, really? And then she started asking questions. So I sent her the, the video mm -hmm. and she was ready to sign up and she signed up. And, and um, so I was happy for that. But yeah, people are nosy. Yes, so they, they want to know what you're watching. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. Yes. And there's some people, if you're a hairstylist, you own a salon or a nail tech or whatever, and you got a TV in the room, put that big picture video on, on, on repeat. You got them for all that time. They gotta sit there. They gonna be curious. And now that it's so easy. They gonna be like, oh wow. I put that thing on repeat. Absolutely. Get shirts, you know, made that strike up a conversation. Um, I know Director Gallon, and I used to have this for my other business, and I keep saying I'm gonna do it now, but he has um uh, advertisement on his back windshield. And he's gotten a lot of people ask him about the business just based on the advertisement on his car. Re represent your business. Right? Um, I saw a question, Eleanor, where was your question? Does your travel group name have to be the same as your business? You can make it whatever you want, but why wouldn't you brand your travel agency? I don't understand why you would change it to anything but your travel agency business if you're trying to grow your brand, your travel agency. 
I, I don't, I can't think of a reason why you would have any other name other than that, but you can make it whatever you want, um, Eleanor, because you are the CEO of your business. But I promise you, Walmart wouldn't change the name, <laughs> right? When they, on their, on their social media, it says Walmart, not something else, because then you're going to confuse people. Uh, Jean? I just want to say so many nuggets are being dropped and man, every one of them are hitting me and I'm sure they're hitting everybody else. But uh, one thing, and I guess this is a nugget, uh, one of my, my first business partner, I got shortly after I started and um, she was excited that I was doing something and uh, she called me and said, hey, I want to do that. You know, wanna, she saw me, you know, with my travel side, you know. And let me tell you, she is a big, big booker. And I'm not even going to get none of that, you know, but I'm working on it. And, um, but she caught hold of Planet Marketing. She running with that now, running. And her people are getting people. So what she did the other day, cause she's about a year in, she started shortly, I guess I'm like 18 months or so, but, and I've been trying to, to beat her. She just made gold, okay. So, wow. uh, yeah, she's doing it. So um, she did a live on her Facebook page about how she started and when the light came on for Planet Marketing, she said, she, you know, and let me tell you, I've been sharing her video. She's a younger girl. And let me tell you, it's powerful. It's so powerful. And I can't share it because it's mine. So, <laughs> but it's all good. Yes, so testimonial. A, yes, wonderful. That's it. That's good. That's good. Yeah, those testimonials. That's why I was saying at convention, interview people and ask yeah. them why Planet Marketing for them and, you know, have them share a testimony. That's good. Thanks for sharing, Jean. Shamika? Um, I just saw that um, Cecilia had another question way at the top. She asked, um, I'm from a small city where people don't travel as much. Do I need to relocate from my business to prosper? I'm really thinking about leaving my hometown so I can flourish. Great question. Do you have to leave your hometown? No, but it could be a good, a, a good business decision for you to move to a bigger area. Mr. Bradley teaches that um, you should live, if you're in the travel industry, right? It's gonna be most beneficial for you to live in a place that has major sports teams, right? They have a football team, they have a basketball team, hockey, soccer. Why? Because that's when you're gonna come in contact with people who travel. So if you're making a business decision of where is going to be the right place, then yes, yes. Move to an area that has um, major sporting teams um, a lot of people in Planet Marketing, once they really start moving, they they move to other places. A lot of people are moving to Atlanta. I personally would move to Atlanta. Y'all can have that Atlanta traffic. But I'm in Atlanta almost every month. At a minimum, every other month, because we have a lot of events there, right? But I live in Florida. Can't beat the weather. We got six cruise ports here. We got Disney, Universal, Right, we got the Tampa Buccaneers, we got the Miami Dolphins, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars. Like, I'm in the Mecca, I'm in the, the, the travel capital of the world. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Um, and so it's very beneficial for me to be here because every time I'm out and about, there's people who move to Florida just because Disney, they want to be close to Disney. They don't want to have to fly to go to Disney. So it's not a bad idea if you, if you are seriously considering moving then take into consideration let me move at least move to a place that has major sports teams because that's going to be beneficial to your business the other thing is do you have to move to build the business no because you have access to social media right and so i built 98 99 percent of my business on social media i had moved to florida but i didn't know anybody here Right, I knew how to get to work, to the grocery store, to the bank and home. That was it. I didn't know anybody and I had a brand new baby, so I wasn't out and about. But through social media, when you have access to 
Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, you know, LinkedIn, you have access to millions and millions of people all over the world. So it doesn't matter where you are, it's who do you have access to? It doesn't matter who do you know, it's who do you have access to? And through social media, we have access to millions of people all over the world. And we're in over 20 countries. And so social media will allow you to get market shares in places that you don't live, right? I had, you know, someone from Wyoming. I don't know. I didn't know anybody in Wyoming. It's in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, right? But someone from Wyoming show, saw my social media, right? And about the business, they got started in the business. And guess what? Then they started recruiting other people who live in Wyoming, right? So now I have more than one business partner in Wyoming, right? So I hope that answered your question. Any other question? It's one o'clock. I know I have a one-on-one -on -one, um, with someone, but I want to share something with y'all real quick. Um, let me let me first stop the recording. <laughs>